Over the past decades, awe-inspiring advances in medical science have almost become routine. Innovation in clinical technology and technique continues to accelerate, making the treatment of ever more complex conditions commonplace, extending and increasing the quality of patients' lives. But for most people, the questions that truly impact quality of life exist beyond the walls of an academic medical center. At the community level, the state of the art of healthcare delivery can be radically different. Barriers to healthy living might include access to care, poverty, lack of culturally relevant information, or a host of other factors, many unique in their impact on a particular community. Health problems exist within the context of people's lives, and if we are serious about addressing health disparities in our communities, we have to be able to better understand that context. And when we do understand that context better, we'll be able to do our public health interventions in a much more effective and efficient way. Traditional translational research has been doing research in a lab, and then you take those answers and you then bring them to the clinic patient setting. That's the definition of translational research, going from the bench to what we call the bedside. But now there's this paradigm shift to take translational research not just from the bench to the bedside, but then from the clinic to the community. The Northwestern University Clinical and Translational Sciences Institute, or NUCATS, was launched in 2007. Recognizing that many effective interventions occur in the context of the wider community, NUCATS created the Community Engaged Research Center, or CIRC. CIRC's efforts connect university researchers with community groups and practitioners to address the last mile of effective approaches to health education, prevention, and delivery. Community engaged research is when the community that's being researched is equally involved in the research with the academic. It's a partnership. It's about equity. It's about the whole process being mutually developed from the beginning. What we're interested in is trying to get the perspective and active participation and partnership with the community in the research activity. And the idea behind this is that the outcome of the research is going to be more valuable and more relevant if the community is part of the process from the beginning. CIRC contains two primary program areas, the Alliance for Research in Chicagoland Communities, or ARC, and the Practice-Based Research Program. ARC supports community-based participatory research, an approach that emphasizes an equal partnership between university researchers and community organizations. What makes it different than traditional research is that you're making sure that the community is at the table early that the community is there when the research question is being asked, that the community is there when they're thinking about what are the priorities, or that the community is there when you're thinking about what are some of the ethical principles, some of the barriers and obstacles, that the community is present at every single step. They identify a question of mutual interest, they identify um, an approach to answering that question, they develop the study design, the study protocol, they participate together in the recruitment of subjects, in the collection of data, in the interpretation of data, in the writing up of data, and the sharing of the results. The ARC Steering Committee is made up of a broad range of community and faith-based organizations and Northwestern faculty. We meet monthly, and as a group, we really begin to break down some of the barriers between community and academics. The major barrier is language. At the grassroots level, we're interested in action. We're interested in change. And the academics tend to be more focused on generating data, um, publishing. And I think that this steering committee brings both together and creates an opportunity to find that common ground. Capacity is another thing that has come up. How do you measure capacity? How do you ensure that the community partners at the table are ready to be at the table? And just because they may not be ready to be at the table doesn't mean that you totally exclude them. That may mean that additional training needs to occur. With guidance by the steering committee, ARC hosts capacity building workshops, provides one-on-one -on -one partnership facilitation and technical assistance, shares information and updates about resources, and advocates for more supportive policies and structures within the wider Northwestern research community. ARC also provides seed grants targeted at building relationships and research collaborations between community organizations and university researchers. Developing a question is a process. It's about taking knowledge and experience from both the target community or population and the expertise of the academic and forming the question that's going to get us the results that we need. Just as ARC connects university investigators with community groups, 
CERC's practice-based research program fosters collaboration between practitioners and Northwestern researchers through seed grants, partnership facilitation, and technical support. The program consists of two practice-based research networks, or PBRNs. The Pediatric Practice Research Group is led by faculty that practice at Children's Memorial Hospital. And the Research and Education for Academic Achievement Network is led by faculty that practice at Northwestern Memorial Hospital. Both are networks of community-based primary care physicians. The broad nature of their patient populations means they are uniquely positioned to help answer questions about health and preventive care that affect their populations and put findings into practice. There are a lot of medical problems that, that are ongoing, preventive, routine. If we intend to really address important, ongoing, common medical problems, the only way we can do that is to, to have access to patients where they live. The kinds of issues that arise in primary care are very different than the ones that arise in the referral medical center. So the study of these conditions, prevention, long-term management, wellness promotion, delivery of services like immunizations, those things have to be studied in primary care settings. The other thing about primary care sites is that they don't just interact with really, really sick people. They interact with people who have all kinds of medical conditions or none to just come in for preventive care. So they provide an opportunity to study some things in the particular sample of the population that they see. Recognizing that practices exist to provide care for their patients, the practice-based research program develops strategies to layer research on top of the activities that doctors already do within their busy clinical routines. I had a practical question. I have patients who are not getting their colorectal cancer screening. It's in a very busy environment, in an environment that's serving mostly immigrants, refugees, uninsured or underinsured, and I needed to find a, a practical answer to that question. So being able to design that intervention right there in that practice with researchers at Northwestern, I was able to analyze that data that we got right there on site, and the lessons learned are easily translated into day-to-day -day practice. In the not-too-distant past, women, children, and minorities weren't routinely included in clinical trial populations. But their inclusion has led to new data and better interventions. In a similar fashion, well-done community-engaged research seeks to ask questions that more accurately reflect the underlying health conditions of entire communities. The benefit is bidirectional. Academics are able to tap into a wealth of grassroots knowledge and gain a nuanced understanding of health issues unavailable through other avenues of inquiry. And when community members and healthcare providers feel genuine ownership in research projects and findings, the results can affect real change in health systems, policies, education, and programming, helping residents take charge of their healthcare and live healthier lives. At the end of the day, what we're trying to do is to find answers to questions that really bother people. And if those questions are best answered in the community, that's where they should be answered. The formalized structured setting provides, opens the door for sustainability. If it's just a project that's important to one individual at the university, after that individual is gone, the priority is gone. Research institutions um, have to see to the maintenance of infrastructures that assure key components of their research enterprise. Under that perspective, I think it will be increasingly clear that community-engaged research requires a permanent, ongoing infrastructure, just like it requires a cancer center and a laboratory building. Universities are now saying, wait a second, we think we know what the problems are, and we think we know how best to get to those solutions, but let's make sure that the people that we're serving, not only do they agree with us, but let's make sure that their priorities are being met. I applaud Northwestern's approach to having this community engagement presence, making sure that different voices of the community are present at the decision-making table. I would bet a fair amount of money that if we could fast forward 10 or 20 years, that um, a robust community-engaged research center will be a recognizable element of every leading research university. It will have to be. It's our only chance um, to answer the unanswered questions that have to be addressed to reduce health disparities and improve the health of the population. And that is the only path to reducing health care costs in the long term.
The key to success is the intensity and the strength of the relationship between the community and the academic researcher. At the core of this relationship is the understanding that this research will address local health issues. If we're ever gonna get to the point where we're really serious about the health of our communities, we need to think about the health of everybody in that community.